Hello everyone, nice to have you here. In this tutorial, we'll be taking a look at the Corona Select material. We'll do a quick overview, talk about how we can use it, and we'll go over a few tips and tricks. Right, so here's Cinema 3D and the scene we'll be working with. I like to think it's just a really simple scene that will help us drive some of our points home. Overall, it's really straightforward. So we have our hero object here in the middle of the scene, which is this vase with a plant in it. And then we only have one single light source, which is this Corona light here with a directionality setting of 52%. And that's pretty much all there is to the scene. If we were to render this thing out right now, as it is, this is how it would look like. Great. Well, now we became acquainted with the scene itself. So now let's talk about the select material. The idea is that with the select material applied to our object, which in our case is this vase here, but well, with it, we can easily switch between different materials. So basically I can switch from material A here, which is this terrazzo like stone material to material B, which is a completely different stone material with a different diffuse texture, different reflection settings and so on and so forth. So basically it's a completely different material. Then I actually have a third material in here called material C, and this one is just a simple glass material. So yeah, as you can see, the select material is insanely powerful for quickly switching between materials. All you need is a select material applied to the object, and in the material itself, you just need to specify the materials you'd want to switch between. So this is really powerful for things like look dev, for animating different looks based on keyframes, automating renders with different materials, and so on and so forth. It's a really useful functionality. Now, before we go over the tips and tricks, let's just quickly make sure we understand the basics here. I'll delete my existing select material here so we can start afresh. So I'm going to select it and hit delete. Great, with it done, I'm going to go under Corona here and I'm going to bring in a new fresh select material. Now, obviously we need to apply this material to our vase. I'm just going to drag it into its appropriate material tag here. And there we go. Now, as you can see right now, it's being rendered out as this default Cinema 4D grayish material. And that is because our select material is currently unpopulated. It has no materials in it. So it just has to display something. And this is what it's displaying right now, the default Cinema 4D material, right? Great, so let's populate it with our materials. If you look down here, you can see that I have three different materials. And uh, to, to fit all of them into my select material, I'm going to need to up the material count first here. So right now it's set to two, and as you can see, I could only fit two materials in here right now. So if I up the material count to three, well, now I can fit in three materials. I'm just going to drag these guys in here one by one like this, and that should do it. And there we go. We have all the materials in here and now we can switch between them. We can do that by either uh, adjusting the current index here. So I can set it to, for example, two, and this is going to be our material B. I can also, instead of the current index here, I can also use the check boxes here and just click on them. And this is going to change the material that you see. Well, at this point, I want to say congratulations. Now you know how to use the select material. But let's talk about some tips and tricks here, shall we? So for tip number one, I want to show you how you can keyframe the current index of the select material so that you can essentially scroll through the different materials using the timeline. It's really simple. Let me show you. In the select material, I'll just select the material I want to be on frame zero. So this is going to be material A for me here. And then I'm going to make sure I'm actually on frame zero. Now I am. And with that done, I'm just going to keyframe the current index here by clicking on this keyframe button. And there we go. Now I'm going to repeat uh, the same procedure for materials B and C with the exception being that material B is going to be keyframed on frame one and material C is going to be keyframed on frame two. So let's do that. I'm going to go to frame one. Now I'm going to select material B and I'm going to keyframe the current index right here. Great. And now the same procedure for material C. So frame two, I'm going to select material C and I'm going to keyframe it. Awesome. 
So now I have these variations essentially saved. And if I bring up the interactive renderer and now start playing around with my timeline here, you can see that now I can easily and quickly access all of these variations super simply, right? Now this is great, but obviously it's a super simple example. So let's make it slightly more production-like. So if I look at my floor materials here under the floors layer, you can see that I have floor A material and floor B material. So two different materials. Now let's say that maybe I'd like to render out different combinations of floors and vases, either to show it to the client or, you know, for my own purposes. Well then I could put another select material in here for the floors and just keyframe them accordingly. Let me show you what I mean. So I'm going to go under Corona here. I'm going to bring in another select material. And now I'm just going to make sure that this select material is under my floors layer. There we go. And now obviously we need to apply it. So I'm just going to apply it to my floor here. There we go. And then uh, what we're left to do is we need to populate our new select material with uh, these two floor materials. So floor A slot one, floor B slot two, because why not, right? There we go. Now let's for example, say we're on frame zero here, and I want this uh, vase to go together with floor B, right? Like this. Well, okay, no problem. I'll just keyframe my current index on frame zero here, and this one is set. Now, for example, let's go to frame one. Uh, well, now we have this other stone material, but we would like to see it combined with the floor A material here. So like this, well, all we have to do now is we just need to keyframe our current index on frame one to be floor A. And there we go. So now I have a bunch of combinations here, which I can easily access just by scrubbing through the timeline. Super easy and super useful as you can see. But now there's an extra thing here. We could essentially automate the rendering process here and render out all of our variations that we've created simply by going into the render settings and setting our frame range to be from zero, from frame zero to frame three. And that should cover all the variations that we've created. So now if I go out for a cup of coffee and come back, I'll have all of these renders rendered out and ready to go. So again, super useful for when you're working with material variations. All right, now not necessarily tightly connected to the select material itself, we also have a select shader in Corona. It's basically the same thing as the select material, with the difference being that it only works for your bitmaps, procedurals, and the like. Let me show you what I mean. I have an extra material layer here, and in it is my current floor material. Let's bring this guy into the Corona Nodal Material Editor. So I'm going to go under Corona here and select the Nodal Material Editor to bring it up. And I'm just going to drag this guy in here. Right on. Now let's imagine we'd like to try to have a couple of different diffuse channel presets here. So first thing that I'll do is I'll actually bring in a Corona select shader. And I'm going to do that by right clicking somewhere in my nodal material editor and going into the new shader here, plugins, Corona, and I'm going to select the Corona select shader. Great. So now I can start bringing in my textures. So for my variation textures, I'm just going to bring in some different variations of my original texture. They just look a little more crunchy than the original, really. Nothing too special. All right, and now once they're all in, I can start connecting them into my Corona select shader. So I'm going to select my texture one and put it into slot one and texture two into slot two. And now, obviously, we don't have a third slot, so we need to go into the Corona select shader here. And as you can see, the interface is exactly the same as the one in the Corona select material. So essentially, what I need to do now is I need to up the texture count to three so that I can connect my third texture in here. Awesome. Now, with that done, we're almost done with this uh, select shader here. All we need to do now is we need to connect it into our diffuse channel slot here in our material, and there we go. Now, if I bring up the interactive renderer, this is how our scene looks like. And now if I wanna quickly uh, switch between these textures, I can just manipulate the current index button here, 
or I could just play around with these checkboxes. And as you can see, the functionality is exactly the same as it is in the Corona Select Material, but now you can also use this technique uh, to create variations with textures as well. So this is really super useful because now you can also keyframe all of these variations and, you know, just really go nuts with your variations. Okay, now before we conclude this tutorial, there is one more thing that I'd like to show you. This is going to be a bit of a tip and trick thing that might be useful to you, and it's about using Corona Light materials and the Select material together. So as you can see, in front of me, I have two lights and some sort of an interior, right? Right. So let's say I want to really control these lights and test out different kinds of light bulbs for the lighting scenario in here. Well, guess what? With the Select material, this can be done quite easily. So I already have a couple of different Corona light materials in here. And as you can see, they just have different color temperatures, which is reflected by their names. And then I also have some funky colored light bulbs, like this red and blue ones, just to drive the point home a little bit easier. Right, so if I wanted to control these a bit more easily, instead of drag and dropping them on each lighting fixture, uh, I could uh, help myself with the Corona Select material. So. What I'll do is I'll create a new Corona Select material and I'm going to call it light bulb A. Right on. So I'm going to bring it up now and I'm going to give it a material count of four because we have four different materials that we want to switch between here. And then I'm just going to start dragging them in here one by one like this. All right. So now this is our light bulb A. Let's copy this exact same select material and let's call it light bulb B. All right, with that done, let's apply these light bulbs to their respective lighting fixture. So lighting fixture A, light bulb A here, and a light bulb B for lighting fixture B here. All right, there we go. Now, how can we help ourselves? Well, let's say, for example, we want our ceiling light to be uh, using a bit of a warmer tone light bulb. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select light bulb B here and uh, switch to the current index of two. And there we go. Now this light is using a uh, 4500K light bulb, while the other one is still using uh, the default one, 6500K light bulb. Now we can make this a little more fun here. Let's give this light a red light bulb, so like this, and the other one, a blue one. And yeah, so now you can uh, see how easy it is to switch between the different light bulbs just because we're using the select material. And we don't have to go in here uh, into our object manager and apply these materials one by one. All we need to do is just go into the select material and, you know, play around with the materials that we have in here. Awesome. Now, if I may, just another very quick but very useful tip. And that is that you can use the select material or the select shader as sort of mini libraries for materials and shaders. It sounds a little bit confusing, but let me quickly demonstrate what I mean. Say, for example, you wanted to copy the sliding fixture from this scene to the other scene that we've uh, been working with earlier. So I'm going to copy it and just paste it into the scene. Well, now, if you take a look at it, we got our select materials transferred along with the rest of the materials that were applied to the lighting fixture. But what is also cool is that the select material brought over all its nested materials as well. So as you can see down here, we have our red and blue light bulbs as well as our 6500K one and the 4500K one. So all of these got transferred along with the select material and all of this wasn't automatically. So what this means is that you can really simply and easily transfer all these variations together with your objects to different scenes and it's all easy and straightforward. Now conversely what we could also do is if I delete all of these materials here just really quickly and now we don't have our light bulb in our lighting fixture so now if I were to go to my other scene and just copy my light bulb, which is light bulb um, A here for our lighting fixture A here, or just copy the select material, 
and bring it into my other scene. Well, now, again, you can see that all of the material is followed. And now I'm essentially using this light bulb A as a preset of sorts. And for example, I could always use this light bulb A as my go-to uh, light material for my uh, lighting fixtures. And all of these presets here can freely be reused at any time, right? Right. So this not only works for the select material, but it also works for the uh, select shader. So if you'll remember in this scene, our floor actually has a select shader. And uh, in it, we have three different textures, right? So if I were to copy uh, this whole material, this floor material to my other scene, like this, and now if I were to apply it to my floor material, there we go. I'm going to start the interactive render as well. Well, now you can observe that if I open up the nodal material editor, now you can see that all these variations came with it. So the Corona Select Shader works uh, similarly to the Corona Select Material when it comes to asset transferring. And so obviously now I can easily switch between these different variations. And so this becomes really, really powerful in many different ways. And it's up to you to leverage all of this power really. Okay. So that concludes this tutorial and we again hope you had fun and that you've learned something new. While risking sounding like a broken record, but the select material and the select shader both can be really useful for creating and rendering different kinds of variations either in your shaders or materials. We're all incredibly excited to see what you come up with. Thanks for tuning in and we'll see you in the next one.